very excited to get uh, get on your calendar and uh, talk you through a very exciting uh, case study that we'd like to share with you about a great seamless experience uh, from our great customer Gabor Shoot. So with that, let's uh, let's get things started. So by rounds of introductions, uh, this is Michael Sohn, your senior, senior Director of Product Marketing for uh, Magento Omnichannel's uh, suite. Joining me today and doing the bulk of the conversation is uh, Dr. Marcus Reheis, uh, Chief Marketing Officer at Gabor Shoes, um, a leading European uh, fashion footwear brand. And Marcus has had uh, 20 years in uh, in marketing and is uh, passionate about delivering omnichannel experiences uh, to his brand. And then also with me is Stefan Vilkomer, uh, CEO and founder of Tech Division, one of our great Magento partners, um, and has been uh, integral in bringing this solution to life for Gabor, and is also passionate about uh, digital commerce and omnichannel solutions. So with that, let's uh, run through a quick uh, topics for the day. Uh, I, I will get things started with a quick introduction and overview uh, uh, set the stage, uh, but spend most of the time handing it over uh, to my um, my guests here, and we're going to go through in quite detail both the business challenge and opportunity that Gabor Shoes found around Omnichannel, and then dig into the actual solution that they are uh, deploying, and uh, also talk a little bit about some uh, initial results, which are quite encouraging, with the plan to leave uh, hopefully about 10 minutes open for Q&A. So we're here talking about omnichannel. So why are we talking omnichannel? And I think um, many of this uh, on this line may know this, but really, the, what drives the adoption of omnichannel is consumers no longer uh, expect anything less of us. Um, I, I use the word consumers are channel blind. Uh, they want a seamless and unified experience uh, across all touch points. Uh, you know, if you look at some of these stats, 73% of consumers uh, get very frustrated if they don't feel that convenience, not only convenience of shopping, but delivery options. They expect convenience across the whole buying delivery uh, value chain. Although that's a, a high bar, only 13% of these consumers feel that they have a well-aligned digital and physical experience. And uh, one aspect that we, we don't often think about, but it's also the con uh, customer service aspect, an omni-channel uh, experience a unified experience to consumer throughout the customer service interaction. So 90% of folks uh, really expect us to deliver that unified experience when talking with customer service. So let's. So what does this mean? You know, we say shop their way. Uh, let's talk about these kind of the triumvirate. I I, I say of, of omni-channel and store fulfillment. Um, and what are the value propositions, both to merchants and well as most importantly, consumers? Buy online, ship to home, got that. You know, we, we know what that's all about. That's kind of the standard flow. But the next two really are um, kind of go hand in hand. Ship from store and shop in store with an endless aisle capability. This is really about delivering, enabling your consumers to never walk away disappointed because they could not access inventory of the assortment that you may have in your chain. Uh, really bad experience that they're they're shopping on your digital channel, uh, and they they don't are not able to uh, to transact or find the product they want because it might not be in your e-commerce DC when it's actually sitting in your store network somewhere. That's a really bad experience. They don't expect uh, that kind of siloed behavior. And conversely, when they're walking into your physical store uh, and you don't have that size or color that they're looking for in that physical store, but it might be in your e-commerce DC or it might be in a, another store across the across the town or across the state, um, you know, we need to provide the ability to capture that sale uh, wherever that product might be. And then buy online store pickup, um, this is, you know, this is leveraging your store network to really provide that ultimate convenience. We often talk about, you know, Amazon's delivery uh, speed and prime. This is where you leverage your physical stores and your local presence to really provide that instantaneous, whether it be minutes or hours pickup uh, that really even Amazon can't compete with, um, that, that convenience, that instant gratification. And, oh, by the way, um, Forrester stats are showing that it all depends on the, the vertical, but Forrester stats are saying that 70% of consumers that actually step foot in your store to actually pick up an item are uh, attaching and buying more once they walk into stores. So that's a, a great value proposition as well. So let's... Um, 
talk through what you know what's going on in the industry in these kinds of uh, scenarios. Um, so the, a couple of these, and I pulled these out because they, a, a few of these folks have actually announced their Q1 earnings, and omni-channel results are really marquee to them announcing their growth and strategy. Home Depot, uh, they announced in their Q1 earnings that 50% of their business, 50% of their digital business is fulfilled uh, or is buy online, pick up and store orders. So 50% of those orders that people are placing on the digital channel those consumers are going up into the going to the physical store to pick those product up, and then obviously doing attach rates and and getting that great in store experience plus that convenience of buying online, pick up and store. Another example here that we're going to talk about is uh, Target. Also announced earnings uh, a couple of weeks ago, and again, Omni Channel was was marquee to their earnings. They're seeing uh, about 15% of their digital business is buy online, pick up and store. But even uh, more amazing is 50% uh, of their business, digital business, is actually fulfilled from their store. So 50% of those transactions that are happening on the digital channel are actually getting routed to a physical store and being fulfilled from that store. And again, we talk about those value propositions. Not only does that reduce shipping costs for uh, Target because they can route that order to, to the closest uh, location to that consumer, they're leveraging a, a unified view of global inventory which enables them to uh, increase inventory velocity. Uh, it prevents that out of stock situation where they, somebody's on the digital channel and might not see something in e-commerce DC, they have exposure to the whole virtual pool of inventory and you're moving inventory faster and you're actually moving inventory such that the velocity is reducing uh, those dreaded markdowns that we all want to avoid when inventory sits uh, and stagnates. So, you know, where does that where does that lead us? And then if you follow the analysts, they're seeing they're they're writing constantly about what are the investment areas? How do you get there? Analyst predictions around growth. And this is about where are where are retailers and brands investing to go achieve those great results? And Gartner's listing omnichannel and order management solutions as one of their top five um, hot you know trends uh, for 2018 is the investment in order management solutions continue to ramp and IDC is saying by 2019 one way or another 50 percent of retailers will have adopted a, an omni-channel commerce platform and technology to drive those benefits that we talked about and those great consumer and seamless experiences so let's look at you know setting the setting the stage for what what we're going to hear next in, in one or two minutes about Gabor. And this is kind of a journey that I think of omni-channel. And I, I think we we talk about omni-channel as it's starting uh, in, in this basic scenario. We often use the word silo. And in the beginning, we had silos. In the beginning, we had silos of our online and offline silos. And we talked about how you break those silos down to create great seamless experiences and drive great result, results with merchants where um, there is no more online and offline silo. So that's what we've done, and that's the, those are the things that we've talked about, and you see lots of folks doing um, with the next slide here that, you know, creating those seamless experiences where you're enabling buy online, pick up in store, ship from store, and ship to store. So commonly understood use case, and I call that omni-channel version one. But really what Gabor has done is taken it to the next level. So if we go to the next slide, Gabor is thinking about, you know, thinking about silos um, that, if you go back one, Barbara, go go to the silos that uh, Gabor has is is addressing, and these are much harder to address, right? Not only do consumer want a seamless experience, whether it's online and offline, consumers also want a, a seamless and and consistent and great experience with my brand, whether it's directly with my brand or through my retail partners. So this is another set of silos that Gabor is addressing. These are much harder to address because obviously these are not all in under one roof. Now you're talking about brands working with their retail partners, the separate separate organizations, not all the business complexities, but the technology and platform capabilities and the order management complexities that you have to uh, think through to enable a seam experience with you and your retail partner. And that's really what Gabor has done. They've really taken Omnichannel and, and taking Omnichannel to another version, V2 of Omnichannel. So they have built uh, a technology foundation and a business uh, objective and strategy that really says, regardless of how you, you interact with Gabor, the brand and the shoe, 
we are going to work with our brand and our retail partners to provide you that seamless experience, whether um, you're engaging through my retail partner and you're accessing the inventory that I have as a Gabor brand or vice versa. One seamless experience, access to their great products, access to a great selection, access to uh, great uh, seamless delivery experiences. So with that, I think we're going to tee up a, uh, a brief video to set the stage and then I'm going to hand it over to Marcus uh, to talk through some more details. Angefangen hat das Ganze mit einem kleinen Schuhgeschäft in Großstrelitz. Und wir fertigen seit fast 100 Jahren schöne Schuhe. Und über die Generation konnte es weitergetragen werden. Und dafür steht heute Gabo für eine gute Passform. Was für uns immer wichtig war, das war eine gute Passform der Schuhe zu gewährleisten. In der dritten Generation ist das nicht anders. Two years ago, we as the company Gabo did not sell at all on the internet. We did not want to make any competition to our classical retailers. But around 30% of every shoe in Germany is sold via the internet now. We decided that we have to play a major role in that game. But for us it was clear that we wanted to have the retailers on our side. The Gobble Collection offers every season more than 3,000 different shoes. If we wanted to provide all these shoes on our online shop, we would have to build up a huge warehouse. It's a great challenge when you are working um, with a traditional and famous brand like Gabo, who is offering their shoes in um, more than 60 countries with more than 5,000 retail stores. That's why we developed this omni-channel concept by having classical retailers as a major part of our system. We found a lot of opportunities to utilize the inventory of the retail business. When an end user buys a Gabo shoe in our online shop, the system will check if there is a retailer who has this product on stock. The Gabo offer is almost unlimited. It is pretty complex to route orders directly to these inventory sources. Managing this kind of complexity, we look for a great solution and there is only Magento Order Management able to deliver that exactly in a scalable and international way. We started three months ago and the results are really amazing. We have many classic retailers that want to be part of the system. We have connected 80 now at the moment and the number is still growing. And what is even more important, the end user loves our online shop. We have almost tripled the turnover in the three months and I'm sure that we will reach our goals for this year and for the next year. Don't be afraid of the future. Take the challenge, because there are great opportunities out there. All right. Uh, good. Good morning, or let's say good. Good morning, uh, North America. <laughs> good. Good evening, Europe, and uh, good night, um, Asia Pacific. So um, I'm Stefan Buchmer. Um, with me is uh, Dr. Marcus Reyes, and he is going to tell you a, a little bit about the uh, history of of Gabor. Yeah. Thank you, Stefan. Hello, everybody in the world out there. Um, I think I can make it very short because we saw a lot of details in the movie. I just wanted to point out that Gabo is a very traditional company founded almost a hundred years ago by a name, a man with the name Pius Gabor. Uh, he started as a retailer himself. Um, he started with a small retail store. Um, he brought it to considerable size. However, the store was completely destroyed in the last days of World War II. Pius and his wife, they both died at the end of uh, this uh, war. But they had six sons and they had brought them to a safer place a few days ago. And two of the sons, they restarted the business, Bernhard and Joachim Gabor. It was in 1949. Bernhard was 20 and Joachim was 17 years old only. 
when they started to build up a manufacturing uh, company. They started with very basic aids. They, they used old uh, tires from uh, buyers, sorry, from cars and, and, and bicycles for the shoe soles. Um, but th they always, uh, they always uh, wanted to have a good quality for their shoes, and that's uh, the success story of, of Gabor, as it is still today, a high quality. And Gabor always worked together with uh, classic retail. We grew up with the retailers, and that was the reason why we a long time hesitated to build up our own online business. We did not want to be competitors of our partners, of the retailers. But since things are changing and uh, online business is getting more and more important, you know the figure now, 30% of all shoes in Germany are sold via the internet. We said we cannot hesitate any longer. We have to set up our own online business. But we want to find a concept um, to have our partners, our retailers on our side. So, and here comes the, the challenge. I mean, Gabor is or uh, is still and, and was independency of uh, the classical retail businesses, which uh, are in 60 countries and um, there are around about 5,000 retailers with 20,000 points of sales. And for Gabo, the sales is almost 80% uh, done through the classical uh, stationary retail business. So you can see the importance of, of the retail, um, which, um, which it still has. So the, let's go to the next slide. So the pain and uh, the problems uh, what Gabor had in the beginning is that there is, of course, I mean, the consumer right now, and, and Michael pointed that out quite well, uh, the consumer uh, in, is looking for a seamless experience, uh, whether in the retail, the multi-brand retail stores or where, um, online, and they want to buy wherever, uh, whenever and from whomever they want. And uh, on the other side, um, the retailers are always in big competition with online pure players and the online business itself. Uh, and then there is, of course, the manufacturer uh, who, like Gabor, who had uh, these classical partnerships with their retail business. And th that leads to an, uh, somehow a conflict uh, within that system. So um, Gabor, as Marcus said, was always hesitating to directly uh, build um, a business to the end consumer. Next? Yeah, next. Yeah, and uh, I mean, also a very uh, dramatic change is going on, not only in Germany, but also in a lot of other countries. I mean, I, I would say it's pretty, pretty similar everywhere, almost uh, everywhere um, on globally. So the um, stationary uh, commerce is under pressure and it's losing dramatically market shares. So uh, Marcus uh, told us and the videos told us that um, in Germany, for example, um, 30% of all shoes which are sold um, are sold directly through the online businesses. So, and within the last years, Gabor also saw a lot of insolvencies in the uh, stationary retail stores. So, um, insolvencies of their customers. So, somebody of course had to ask the the question if the downfall of the stationary uh, commerce business will also affecting us and will also be our downfall as a as Gabor as the company next uh, slide please yeah so uh, another challenge uh, what we uh, saw with Gabor is um, that there was a, a lack of experience in terms of uh, direct to consumer business. I mean, of course, Gabor had uh, um, before uh, a corporate website showing their products, so showing their collections, and they already did um, digital marketing, but always with the intention to just build uh, awareness for their brand and um, to bring consumers into the retail business or maybe to uh, online retailers who are also Gabor clients. Uh, so that was kind of a, a, um, 
uh, also a challenge for Gabo. On the other hand, uh, maybe Marcus, you can uh, give the nice example in terms of logistic, uh, what is also a, a challenge here. Yes, um, you can imagine that uh, business to consumer log logistics is completely different from business to business logistics. Um, just an example, it is very easy for us to ship, let's say, 50,000 pairs of shoes to one B2B customer, but it's a completely different thing to ship 50,000 individual packages to 50,000 individual end users and to get around 25,000 of these back because the returns are around 50% in our business. So that's a thing we had to learn in terms of logistics. Another example is the product data. In the past, it was not necessary for us to have um, pictures of each and every product um, in a detailed view, in a 360 degrees um, view. So we had to set up a photo studio. We had to set up the process uh, to make pictures of all our products. We had to higher photographs. So many things that we had to learn and still have to learn to build up B2C commerce. Yeah, let's go ahead. So the solution uh, was, um, of course, not pretty pretty obvious in the beginning. So there were a, a lot of a lot of discussions uh, and brainstorming how we could uh, solve that situation. And um, finally, uh, we um, figured out that there is only with the concept of Gabor uh, partnering with retail, there is only one way to do so. And that is uh, a concept what we are calling multi-retail marketplace. And it consists of two areas. One is the online world, but the other world is still, I mean, the actual retail brick and mortar business, the offline world. And in the online world, what we are doing here is um, pretty simple uh, from um, an external view. So there is an, an um, direct to consumer or B2C online shop, uh, which um, is served or which is done uh, directly from, from Gabor. Um, what is special here that is we are integrating the inventory sources of retail stores, but not only of Gabor own retail stores, but also from Gabo customers, so independent retail stores also integrated into that um, 360 degree inventory. And uh, through some um, algorithms, we are routing that orders to um, the retail stores directly to fulfill that. We come to that in a bit. Uh, let's talk a bit about the offline world as well as uh, we are um, as, as consumers are still entering um, stores, retail stores, and they wanted to have, for example, um, a specific shoe in a specific size, which is not um, available in the retail store uh, with that concept um, of a uh, digital touch point with endless ale capabilities. It was possible or it is possible to bring the full Gabor collection uh, also in retail stores and maybe Marcus you can add a little bit about the collection about the sizes so that people can imagine uh, what that means and, and why is that important. Yeah the size of the collection is around 3,000 different styles each season 3,000 different shoes we offer and a typical retailer will have on stock maybe a hundred of them the bigger retailers they will have maybe 200 of them 200 out of 3,000. So you can imagine um, that end users often go to the shops they have in mind due to advertising or due to um, due to Facebook or whatever and um, a special style. And the end user does just not find this style in the shop. Now with the digital solution in store, the retailer can offer a complete range of products, be it directly in the store or be it via the online terminal. And he gets the best out of two worlds. He gets the best out of classic retailer. Retail, he can go to the shop, he can speak to people, he can feel the product, he can touch the product, he can try on the shoes. And when he has found 
his size, he can access the whole range of products via the online terminal. So the bottom line here is it is really a win-win situation uh, for all participants in that business. So it's for Gabor uh, a, a win situation because um, Gabor is able to bring a really seamless uh, experience, digital experience to their end consumers, which are demanding exactly that. And but also can partner with the retail business, and the retail business is also happy because they can do business which they were not able to do before. Because for most of the uh, retail stores out there, it's not really possible to compete with the big players in the online game. So uh, for them, it's also a great help to do additional business. Next slide, please. Yeah, next slide. So as uh, you are the godfather, <laughs> <laughs> you are the godfather from that business model. Uh, maybe you can talk a bit about and talk us through uh, the business model uh, in a in a more detailed way. Yeah. Okay. Let's start right on the top. You see the end user there. Right on the bottom, you see MRM. MRM stands for Multi Retail Marketplace. That's our yeah solution based on Magento. Uh, digital commerce and, uh, and MDC. On the left, you see at the bottom the retailer. Yeah, and on the top, you see the, the package that shall be shipped to the end user. Um, again, we start right on the top, the end user. He goes into our online shop. He selects a product he wants to have. Uh, then the MRM system will do an allocation run. That means it will check which of the connected retailers can deliver this product. Um, the, next, uh, the next step will be that the retailer gets a notification that there is an order and the retailer now can double check if this desired product is really still in his stock. Um, even if we had connected uh, the, the um, products, the, the system of the retailer to our um, multi-retail marketplace, we cannot, cannot be 100% sure if the product still is on stock because it could have been sold five seconds ago, it could have been stolen, Any many other things can happen. So the retailer will double check and uh, in most cases he accepts the order and says, yes, I have this product on stock, I want to do the fulfillment. If it does not accept, the MRM will do another allocation run and search for the next retailer. The next step is that MRM gives the fulfillment request to the retailer and the retailer then can print out the shipping documents, can print out the shipping label and yeah, make uh, the package ready for uh, transportation to the end user. Um, the next step will be that the payment service provider uh, makes the, the payment, the money goes to Gabor in the first step uh, and after six weeks uh, Gabor will uh, give the retailers the money uh, that has come from the end users and Gabor will keep a, a little marketplace commission. Right. That's Next. the process in, in an overview. Yeah. Next slide please. Yeah, um, let's talk uh, a bit about uh, the technology behind because the right concept needs, of course, the right uh, technology, which is capable of uh, handling the complexity and, of course, levering, uh, leveraging all parties and stakeholders in the business. And for that, we uh, choose a couple of Magento products, um, of course, and we enhance these products with uh, a couple of our own developments and bundle that together to that product, what we are now calling multi-retail marketplace. And so you see here, um, the orange ones uh, obviously are um, standard Magento products. So we are using for the storefronts uh, Magento Commerce. We have different, um, already uh, two different storefronts. I come to that in a while. And uh, we are using Magento order management 
for the 360 degree inventory view. Um, it serves more or less as a kind of middleware, um, which knows all about the, the inventory and doing all the sophistic, uh, sophisticated uh, algorithms, uh, routing orders, splitting orders, and uh, we will show you a bit about that in a while. Uh, what we enhanced here is as the processes between Magento Commerce and Magento Order Management um, are quite complex and also the data exchanges are quite complex here. Uh, we um, enhanced Magento Commerce with an Magento 2 import framework, which is uh, fully open source and available on GitHub, and also with a, a module which is called Pipelines. And Pipelines, they are taking care of all these complex processes. There are a lot of processes which um, probably are overlapping uh, when they are running and these um, overlapping processes can mm, produce some errors for example and some of these processes maybe have um, have to restart it again or uh, if they are producing errors you want to see these errors and pipelines are um, exactly looking into that so they are um, uh, looking into if uh, processes are running parallel and they are um, looking also um, into if there are any errors and if it's uh, possible to automatically fix errors uh, on the run. So these are um, two enhancements we built for that platform. We also had to integrate of course a lot of third-party uh, systems like the local ERP uh, systems on the POS and also the Gabor uh, ERP, the central ERP system, which is also integrated into the order management as well as Magento Commerce, um, because, for example, the payment um, has to be um, or is connected um, to uh, um, the, the Magento Commerce, and there needs to be some, for example, credit memos, which, are, uh, which will be recognized in Magento Commerce, so the ERP system has to be integrated into uh, both systems. Yeah, so the, this is basically a, a pretty simple overview. If you look a little bit more into detail into the processes, you will see a, a lot of more arrows there, so it's, uh, it's much more complex what is going uh, on in the background. Uh, but uh, we would like to talk uh, and show you a little bit about one of the most interesting um, implementations and processes we are doing is the sourcing algorithm. So maybe Marcus, you wanna wanna say some words about that? Uh, yes, of course. Um, when we when we set up the concept, we said we want to have a principle that we call retailer first. So first, the system is checking if there is a retailer that can deliver the desired product. Um, only in case that there is no retailer who has the product available, then the order will go to our central warehouse and we will fulfill the order ourselves. Uh, another uh, important thing is that the system uh, is trying to avoid split orders if possible no split orders let's say a customer buys three different pairs of shoes then the system will check if there is a retailer who can deliver all the three pairs of shoes to avoid uh, having several packages but it is if this is not possible the system will allow up to three splits so three different retailers in a max can deliver the uh, the, the goods um, if it should come to a situation that more than three uh, packages are necessary, then the system will automatically allocate uh, the order to our central warehouse, and we do it because we want to avoid want to avoid that the customer gets four or more different packages. This creates shipping costs. This is inconvenient for the customer. This can uh, this would create confusion when it comes to returns. So the basic goal is to avoid split orders, but a max of three is possible. All right, so next slide. So the execution, of course, I mean, you, you can imagine uh, if you have a, a pro project which is quite complex, um, not only from the technical side, but also from the business model, because this is something what 
I mean, really disrupt the business model at Gabor itself. So uh, there were a lot of conversations going on. So um, the, the project technically wise started in October 2016, but the discussions and also the business uh, modeling uh, was a process which started almost a year earlier. So the project started itself with a, a kind of a discovery and kickoff workshops, bringing all participants and all stakeholders together to uh, aligning everything and everybody to the project, doing the discovery, looking into the requirements. And of course, then we started as it is a, an agile em environment with a uh, minimal viable approach so that we were implementing uh, basic template sets uh, according to the uh, CI and the UX requirements of Gabor and some um, special uh, needed and custom features uh, we implemented for example um, the 360 degree view for the products and of course we had to in the beginning already integrate the existing IT infrastructure like uh, the ERP uh, system. So that took a couple of months uh, and uh, led us to the milestone one uh, which we planned for um, the uh, April or for April 2017 and that was um, the, the first milestone um, that someone could see the, the, the front end of the, the online shop because we uh, launched a shop, a closed beta shop for employees. As employees are, uh, I mean, the most critical customers, uh, we try to um, get their um, reviews and uh, their thoughts about the online shop and about the concept so they also were able to uh, test basic processes and then we started uh, with the integration and adaption of the magento order management uh, bringing it into the the um, in the uh, complete uh, infrastructure. So we also had uh, at this point of time to integrate uh, already payment interfaces so the employees could also pay with different payment methods and um, we tried to uh, enhance um, that to the payment methods we wanted to have uh, from the very beginning for uh, the live environment. So like uh, invoice, credit card, PayPal um, and some German specific ones. Um, then we also connected the Gabor Central Warehouse um, to um, the uh, order management so that we have the fully inventory of the Central Warehouse. And of course, I mean, we started testing and optimizing the fulfillment processes as Gabor was new to the B2C logistic area. Uh, there had to be also improvements and test runs there. So the next milestone then um, was in October, uh, was our milestone two in uh, October 2017. So we started uh, as the M, um, as the Magento order management implementation was almost done or was um, at least as a level at a level where we were able to connect the first Gabor stores. So um, that was part of that milestone as well. Then um, a successive extension of the user group means so we extended um, the range or the, the groups to more Gabor employees uh, and also to third parties like the service providers. So we uh, here at Tech Division were also forced to buy a lot of Gabor shoes, which was not a big problem for our women working here. For me, it felt a little bit awkward to buy high heels, um, but yeah. Um, you had to. I had to, <laughs> yeah. There was no chance, so I had to. Um, yeah, so we did comprehensive test purchase uh, with a really different target and user groups, uh, including return processes, so we tested that all uh, over and over again. Uh, order delivery returns uh, uh, and really try to do it under live conditions. Um, and then, uh, of course, based on these results, uh, we tried to optimize the platform also from the user experience perspective. So we did a lot of um, special tests uh, only for the user, uh, for the front end view, and we optimized there also a lot to be sure when we are hitting the milestone through that we are able to deliver a really uh, high quality product, uh, which normally Gabor stands for. 
So this is really a, a, a big um, value proposition of Gabor as a brand to deliver highest quality. And that was also really important to do that here um, as well. So well, then we hit Milestone 3, which was in December 2017. So we call it the soft launch uh, of the marketplace. Um, we did not really any marketing there. We just had our first press report. I mean, the um, response to that was already quite interesting. Um, so pretty good in uh, response we got. So what we uh, did here, we just integrated through a, a, um, a direct link into the uh, existing corporate website. So there was uh, no really integration uh, into the corporate website yet done. And we connected then uh, at this time already uh, a couple of extra um, merchants to the marketplace. So not only Gabor stores and the central warehouse, but also already a couple of the prime uh, merchants. And of course, I mean, uh, still we uh, uh, did testing, ongoing and monitoring of all the important parameters so that we were uh, able with the collection change uh, in end of February uh, to do the uh, official launch, which was then uh, our last uh, uh, milestone so far. So that was the official launch uh, by the end of February in 2018 uh, when the Gabor marketplace was launched. Um, under the gabor.de um, domain here in Germany. So uh, there is more to come uh, for sure. So we are looking into internationalization, uh, of course, and also there is a really uh, nice backlog for improvements already, what we uh, have figured out uh, with the data we have gathered together. So um, since February 2018, uh, the corporate website was completely um, exchanged with the marketplace. So if you're surfing or if you're going to uh, Gabor.eu, you see now the uh, multi-retail marketplace. So let's just uh, jump over short uh, about some use cases. Um, so what we have uh, seen or what we have done. Uh, one is, of course, store fulfillment through different uh, stores. So that means to, through Gabor own. Uh, mono brand stores, but also to multi brand retailers. So that was one use case. Um, another use case was, of course, multi selling channels and inventory. So bringing different channels on the one hand, so the consumer demands from web mobile, from stores, from customer service, from digital touch points, together with the different inventory locations. So the central warehouse, single retail stores. Uh, retail store networks because um, the bigger Gabor clients, they are not uh, just single retailers. They have uh, maybe a couple of more stores. And of course, also the Gabor own flagship uh, and mono brand stores. Yeah, uh, another uh, another topic is the customer service. Marcus, uh, yeah. want to say something about that? Yes, of course. Uh, customer service is very important. Uh, I do not have to say that. And as a high quality brand, our customers expect uh, high quality customer service, of course. So it's absolutely necessary that the uh, service agents have access to all necessary data from the shipment status, the payment status, all that's uh, connected. Um, yeah, and this is a part of the solution. All right, next uh, slide. So, which is uh, the, the final area, uh, the endless ale, um, the digital touch point in store, um, enabling uh, consumers uh, to see in store on a digital touch point the whole collection of Gabor. And so having access uh, through the central warehouse. And, and that is also great because um, it brings uh, uh, sales opportunities to retail stores. And this is a, um, um, a prototype uh, we have brought in uh, to the Gabor uh, own uh, mono brand store. Marcus, maybe you tell us a little bit about the Gabor sales generator. Yeah, what you can see on the picture is a typical situation. The end user goes to the terminal together with the sales uh, agent and what they do is they scan the barcode which is on the shoe and as soon as the barcode is scanned the system will get the full information about this product, will uh, bring the information 
uh, which sizes and colors, for example, are on stock in this retail store, which alternatives are on the central warehouse, and the whole um, yeah, process can be, uh, can be made on this terminal. And the customer can then decide um, if he wants to have this product sent home or if he wants to go back to the retail store the next day when the product is available there. So the good thing for the end user, he gets the whole range of Gabo shoes available. The good thing for the retailer, he makes business even if he does not have the product in stock. And so it's a win-win situation for all who participate. Yeah, let's talk finally about some statistics and fact what we have seen and, and what's the status of the, uh, the concept and the platform is right now. So, Marcus, uh, yeah. you on. Yeah, currently we have 80 stores connected to our marketplace, but we have many retailers who also want to be connected. Um, it was exciting to see how many retailers want to participate at the concept. When we started, when we announced it, it took maybe two minutes and uh, the first telephone uh, calls came in and the first retailers told me, hey, I wanna be part of the concept. They did not even ask about conditions or anything. They just wanted to be part of the system. So 400 by the end of, uh, of the year is the planning. We have very nice uh, revenue development, very nice growth rates. I show you a, a picture uh, in a few seconds. 50% um, of all orders, they go to brick and mortar stores currently. And the other 50% goes to our central warehouse uh, where we do the fulfillment ourselves. Um, in the stores where we have this installation of the endless ale, we see a plus of turnover of up to 20%. And uh, stores connected to the online marketplace, they even uh, have plus in turnover of 30%. So next slide, please. Yeah, here's, you can see the development of the sales per week. Uh, it starts at the beginning of 2018 and goes to week 15. Yeah, and I do not have to uh, explain um, in many words, but uh, the, the sales is really exciting. It's better than our goals, and I'm absolutely sure that we will reach our goals or even get higher by the end of this year. So very nice development for us and for our retailers. Yeah, and three months after we launched the online marketplace, it is right now number one in sales of all Gabo stores, and I think that's a really exciting figure. All right, so um, basically that's that's it from, from our end. So we uh, are open for questions right now, um, if there are any questions. Okay, I see one question is uh, coming in. Uh, the question is, is the Magento BI an important part of the architecture? Uh, yes, it is. Um, we, um, um, we had started now to use Magento BI for some additional KPIs. For example, what we are measuring is um, the shipping uh, time. So that means because we want to, in the future, want to consider that also for the um, um, allocation. So how fast a retailer is shipped and the, or is able to ship. Uh, the product so that means we are measuring from the first allocation run until uh, the accepting and then the fulfillment processing we measure these times and um, so this is quite easy with the integration of magento bi we are still or we are already in some some uh, building uh, or building some uh, specific omnichannel reports so uh, yes uh, to answer that short uh, it's a pretty important part of the architecture Great. So, I see a couple other questions coming in. Yeah, Stefan yeah. and Marcus, you want to grab those other? Yeah, yeah. I go, I go directly yeah. to the next one. Uh, I just read it. Um, were there uh, any roadblocks uh, with certain retailers, for example, who could not use the technology in the way you needed them to? Uh, yes, I can uh, uh, explain a little. Um, we we have some criteria, so that means that not. Every retailer can take part at the system. 
one uh, basic thing is that the retailer must have um, yeah quite quite a large number of GABA products on stock because otherwise it would not make sense for him if he gets one or two orders per month that would not make sense so he has to have um, he has to be a quite a large GABA customer to be connected and of course what we see is that it is absolutely necessary to train the retailers and the personnel because many of them they are really no onliners they need a lot of uh, support and not a lot of explanation um, but once once we do it once we did it we see that that it works out the retailers they see that they get that they get orders they make additional sales and yeah they are very enthusiastic to to keep on board okay there is another question i see um the question is uh, we see you kicked off in March 2016. How much planning went into the project prior to kickoff measured in month? So um, first of all, we kicked off the project technically wise in October 2016. And um, uh, it took almost a year before to, um, you know, find the right uh, business model, find the right ideas gathered together, um, brainstorming also with some specific um, um, stakeholders in the company uh, to figure out what could be the right concept. So it, it was almost a year of, of planning, uh, conceptual planning uh, before we really kicked off the project. So there is another one. Um, it seems like connecting to your ERP would be very complicated, but it seemed uh, to get uh, swiftly for you. What are your tips? I mean, connecting to your ERP system is always uh, key and is, is in every almost every project pretty different. Um, here, I mean, uh, basically we have uh, connected the Agabo uh, own ERP system, of course, but also we had to uh, connect different or still have to connect different uh, ERP systems uh, from the retailers. The good thing here in Germany is that uh, I would say 80% of the German shoe retailers, they have um, uh, four or five uh, ERP systems they're using. So with this integrations of four to five um, of these systems, you already almost hit 80% of the retailers out there in the market. I'm not pretty sure if it, if it, yeah, uh, right. if it mm -hmm. really answers the question. So if, you, if you're not satisfied with that, just drop us uh, another line. Um, one more question here. I see, well, there's, how do you, how do you, um, uh, suggest a strategy or approach to adopt omnichannel, and then I think that dovetails in how can your uh, retail stores, can a retail store customer that doesn't offer e-commerce shipping participate and benefit in your omnichannel strategy? Um, if a customer finds the shoe in your store, you check if a retailer has the stock and they would send the customer, but what if the retailer is not set up for e-commerce shipping? So they had to be set up, to, yeah. You want to handle that? Stefan? So uh, shall we shall we uh, try to answer the the last question? Yeah, um, sure. Yeah. How can I, I just have to read it again? Sorry. Me too. How can a retail store customer that doesn't offer e-commerce shipping participate and benefit in your omnichannel strategy? Well, um, I tried to answer this first part of the question. In the end, we tried to make it as easy as possible for the retailer. He does not have to have a big infrastructure to send away packages. He needs a computer to get connected to the Magento system where he gets the orders and he, where, he, where he prints out the documents. Of course, he needs a printer. We as Gabor will uh, supply the retailers with packaging material. That's uh, quite standardized. We have four different sizes for different um, yeah, kinds of shoes and um, multi-packages. Um, so that makes sure that the, the presentation to the end user is always standard, it always uh, comes in Gabo packages. He needs a table and that's it. Then he can start, he prints out the shipping label, um, the, he puts it on the box and then he brings it to the carrier or in most cases, the carrier comes to the retailers anyhow, and they collect the packages. So that's that's not a big thing so far, but so we have experienced. Pretty low barrier. 
Okay. Uh, great. I'm, I'm going to uh, cut this off now because we're up against time, but I do want to just take one second to thank uh, Marcus and Stefan for this uh, great presentation. Uh, this truly is advanced and innovative omni-channel to another level and hope everyone um, found value in it and see Gabor uh, blazing that trail. There's a few other questions in the chat that we'll follow up with everyone uh, offline, but uh, hope you enjoyed it and enjoy the rest of your day. All right, thank you for that. Thank you and goodbye. Goodbye.